after a long hiatus, I am happy to say we are back with another Miss of Wah video. I was originally going to make this video as its own separate thing, but considering the fact that my Myths of Wah videos make up for 80% or more of my total views and subscribers, I figured we might as well make this episode 4. While not necessarily specific to World at War, this video covers the potential inspirations for Nazi zombies as a whole. I want to shout out Ellis Ullman, who left this comment on one of my videos leaving me with some great ideas, including the one we'll be diving into today. Without further ado, let's take a look into the strange and superstitious world of the Nazis, and see if real-life events and experiments may have led to the inspiration of Call of Duty's Nazi Zombies and its lore. It goes without saying that the association of Nazism with fictitious and fantastical ideas is commonplace in today's culture, and has been for decades. We can see examples of this in modern culture pieces such as Raiders of the Lost Ark, Hellboy, and the Wolfenstein games. We can also find examples of this in older pieces of literature such as The Morning of the Magicians, written in 1960 by Lewis Powells, and The Spear of Destiny, written in 1972 by Trevor Ravenscroft. Of course, Call of Duty's own Nazi Zombies is also a contender in this list of fantastical representations of Nazism. Most of these are by no means trying to be taken literally, but that cannot be said for all of them. Claims such as the Nazis developing UFO technology, seeking artifacts like the Holy Grail, or creating an anti-gravity machine may seem outlandish at first. Many of these fictitious claims have their roots in reality. Take for example, the idea that the Nazis were developing UFO technology. While that statement on its face is false, there are indeed claims by engineers serving under the Nazis near the end of the war that flying saucer type vehicles were in development. For example, something like the Avro Canada VZ9 Avro car. German engineer George Klein and aeronautical engineer Roy Fedden both made similar claims about the development of flying saucers and other unusual projects within the Luftwaffe. This goes to show that even the craziest of claims can be backed up by some truth. So how does this look in regards to Nazi zombies? In my research on this topic, I found many interesting things, but I believe we can narrow it down to two, the occult and Nazi human experiments. It's important to remember that from the belief in the Aryan race stems most, if not all, of the wild and evil doings of the Nazi regime. Per Wikipedia, the Aryan race is an obsolete historical race concept which emerged in the late 19th century to describe people of Indo-European heritage as a racial grouping. Of the two possibilities I have narrowed down for Nazi zombies, let us begin with the occult. While the history of the Nazis and the occult can be quite convoluted, there is no doubt that their origins can be traced to groups such as the Thule Society. The Thule Society was a German occultist group founded in Munich shortly after World War I. The name Thule comes from a mythical northern country in Greek legend. The Thule Society would go on to sponsor the German Workers' Party later to be reorganized by Hitler to form the National Socialist German Workers' Party. A primary focus of the group was the Aryan race and Ariosophy. They also believed in a lost ancient landmass known as Ultima Thule, located in the extreme north near Greenland. It was said by Nazi mystics to be the capital of ancient Hyperborea, a mythical society that the Nazis linked to the Aryans. As far as membership goes, there is no evidence that Hitler was a member of the Thule Society but notable Nazis like Hans Frank and Rudolf Hess were indeed members. Many other top-ranking Nazi officials spoke at meetings and events held by the Thule Society. So how does this correlate with Nazi zombies? In relation to the story of Nazi zombies, there are indeed many occult themes portrayed throughout it. For example, in the Black Ops 3 map Shadows of Evil, you are required to go through four rituals in order to access the sacred place containing Pack-a-Punch. Within these places where the rituals take place, there is no shortage of what one may consider occultic imagery. Perhaps another similarity to occult themes can be drawn from the Aether story, and the likes of the Shadow Man and the Apothecons, who would create the Aether Pyramid. This pyramid would go on to be hidden on the moon, later to be discovered by the Nazis. Coming back to reality, let's focus on some of the experiments the Nazis did and how they posed some similarity to Nazi zombies lore. Of the many crimes the Nazis committed, their experimentation on human subjects is arguably the worst. With an endless supply of subjects, thanks to Hitler's final solution of sticking Jews and others in concentration camps, the regime could have its way with whomever it pleased. To discuss all the horrific things done would take far too long for this video, but as a brief overview, I will list some of the more disturbing examples. The experiments carried out included freezing, mustard gas, poison, electroshock, and much more. 
As we can see, the Nazis have a deep and extensive history with experimentation on human beings. While no experiments were ever done to try to create zombies, as far as we know, this wasn't the case for the Nazis of Call of Duty. I'm sure that many of you are familiar with Dr. Maxis and Rick Toffen, two of the most important figures in the events that would lead to the zombie outbreaks. Allow me to give you a brief background on these two. Dr. Ludwig Maxis was the lead scientist part of the project known as Doris, and was the father of Samantha Maxis. He was also the leader of group 935, who conducted research on the infamous element 115. According to Richthofen's bio added with MatPack 2 and World at War, Dr. Richthofen, known affectionately as The Butcher, has been at the forefront of torture and information extraction research. He would go on to join Group 935 shortly after meeting Maxis in 1936. These two men engaged in many experiments involving teleportation and Element 115. These tests often involved humans, but they also experimented with dogs. For example, the Hellhounds are a zombie variant you fight on certain maps in the game. In the lore, these vicious dogs came about after sending Samantha's dog, Fluffy, through a teleporter. When Fluffy reappeared, she was no longer the dog she was before. Instead, she took the form of the demonic dogs we all know today. Their experimentation with Element 115 would later lead to the zombie outbreaks, such as what happened at Verrucht. While the experiments carried out by Maxis and Richthofen are in the realm of science fiction, it doesn't negate the similarities to the real-life Nazi regime and their passion for inhumane experimentation. Truthfully, one could sit down for hours and attempt to draw conclusions as to what exactly drove the devs of Treyarch to make such a legendary game mode. What is for certain is that the idea of Nazi zombies, while being a popular horror trope even beyond the Call of Duty series, is not an entirely far-fetched idea when you look at all the pop culture and fantastical things said about the Nazi regime today. While it is unlikely the Third Reich ever intended to raise an army of the dead, they most definitely made a place in history for themselves as some of the most evil and strange people to contend for world domination. And who knows, maybe one day we'll unearth a secret Nazi bunker containing zombies, aliens, the Holy Grail, and the roadmap for Halo Infinite Season 2. But this is highly unlikely. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed Episode 4 of Myths of War and learned some new things along the way. If you'd like to check out the previous episodes of Myths of World at War, I'll have them linked at the top right corner of this video. Until next time, peace guys.